Hey Walden students, it's Ms. Holt in the Media Center. It is another first chapter feature day. And today I'm featuring the book called The Truth as Told by Mason Buttle. This is one of the books on our Mark Twain Awards list this year. Um, and I decided to share this book because I really like it. It is a funny book, but it's also a mystery book. And as you can see by this um, sil silver seal here on the cover, it is a National Book Award finalist which means it's pretty awesome. It's won some really cool awards. So we're going to go ahead and start off reading this, um, The Truth as Told by Mason Buttle. And the first chapter is actually pretty funny, so I hope you enjoy this part. Chapter one is called The Stupid Shirt, with two O's, The Stupid Shirt. Tell you what, I already knew who stuffed this t-shirt into my locker. Matt Drinker did that. He took a Sharpie to it first. Fat black letters. He wrote stupid on it, the same way I spelled my word in the spelling bee on Friday morning. S-T-O-O-P-I-D. A kid like me doesn't belong in the spelling bee, but it is for all of the seventh grade. It's not how I would kick off the school year, but I'm not in charge. Elimination rounds start in the classroom. I'm eliminated. I saw a movie about a spelling bee once. There was a girl and she had a magic about her. She could hear her word any word at all, and the letters wrote themselves in the air. It happened in swirls and sparkles with fuzzy bees and fairies making glitter trails. The letters opened like apple blossoms. They flowed like paint off a brush, always the right letter. People said that that couldn't really happen, seeing things that way. It was just a movie trick. But I believe what that girl saw, at least some. I see things too, but no fairy wings, no flowers blooming. Here's what happened on Friday morning. I heard my word. Stopped. Had to be the easiest word ever in a seventh grade spelling bee. Tell you what, I knew I was going to spell it right. Stopped has double letters. I like those. It's like getting a two for one. Well, too bad, because as soon as I thought of that, I thought of another word. Starts with the same sound and has double letters somewhere around the middle part. Stoop. I have been with my brain for 12 long years. I know how it puts things wrong. So I closed my eyes and I thought, okay, Mason, don't let that get into your head. Don't go spelling stoop. That's not your word. Your word is stopped. Under my eyelids, I started to see the letters. That's why I say it's like the girl from the movie. I can see the letters. But for me, they go ugly. They fade or swell up. They slide away. If my eyes had pinchers on them, I'd grab at the letters and I'd hold them still. Tick. Tick, tick. You cannot take your time in a spelling bee. Stopped. S and T. Those were correct. I knew they were. I said them. I got that safe feeling. And then the spelling timer ticked again. I tried to see the letters. Clear. But they were fuzzy. Then they blobbed. I have seen it plenty of times. I squeezed my eyes shut tighter. I thought, please let me get this. I saw fat letters, blurry letters, and then came the other thing I see, color. It happens sometimes. This time it was dirty green, floats in like smoke. It happens when I can't get to the right answers. That green, it is the color of pressure on me. A spelling bee is pressure. I rolled my eyeballs behind my lids, tried to erase all that mess. My brain got caught on that other word, stoop, double letters. Tick, tick, I saw two O's. I said two O's. Somebody snorted. I knew I was wrong, knew I had to finish. Get it over with. I wiped my sweaty hands on my pants. Stopped. I heard a P sound. I, I said it quick. I knew there was something more, a T on the end. No, a D, it should be a D on the end, but not just D, tick. Tick. No time. I said I and D. What I spelled was S-T-O-O-P-I-D. What it sounded like was stupid. The buzzer sounded and the whole classroom roared. Matt Drinker loves that when something happens. That's why I'm guessing he put this stupid shirt inside my locker. He must have picked my lock to do it. Funny thing is, I knew what the shirt said because of the two O's in the middle. I knew in two blinks. 
Matt doesn't know it, but he did me a big favor. I always take two shirts to school, unless I forget. I changed that just before lunch. This is because of how I sweat. It is a lot. I can't stop it. Can't hide it. I need to be dry at the lunch table. Otherwise, I'm a total gross out of a kid. Well, today was a day that I forgot my extra shirt. So I'm wearing this one that says stupid on it. It's big and it fits me and it's clean and dry and I'm going to keep moving. Maybe nobody will see what it says. And if they do, well, tell you what, plenty worse has happened. I'm going to go ahead and read chapter two because these are short. Chapter two is called The Swoof. Other kids look up to me in the hallway. They have to. I'm the biggest, tallest seventh grader at Merrimack Middle School. By a lot. Today I'm moving fast. They laugh when they see me. Laughing is better than no laughing. I smile. I know I look funny like a big walking billboard for stupid with us with two O's. I'm skipping the cafeteria. It is a wild place. Seems like a stupid shirt could start a food fight. I'm headed to the swoof. That's Miss Blinney's room. I take giant steps all the way down the hallway and I think about this. The swoof has double O's in the middle, like the word on my shirt. Funny name, the swoof. Miss Blinney made that up. She used some little tile letters. They came from a sign that said social work office. I know that because Miss Blinney told me. She was making the swoof sign the day I met her. Mrs. Lorenz from the elementary school brought me over to the middle school on the last day of fifth grade so I could meet her friend. We walked through the front part of the office where there's a big soft couch and two beanbag chairs. Also, a lava lamp and a little table with a snack basket on top. There are posters on the wall and a whole lot of clutter. Miss Blinney's desk is the last thing, tucked behind a bookcase by the window. Something smelled hot in there the day I went to meet Miss Blinney. Sure enough, she was holding a glue gun in one hand and pushing those little letter tiles around on her desk with the other. Pink paint was drying on a nice wooden shape. A pink paintbrush was drying on her desk. Miss Blinney sure was busy. But when she saw me, she looked up and smiled. Oh yeah, she said, Mason, glad to meet you. And the smile got bigger. She stayed looking at me like a person shining from the inside out. At me. Her glue gun dripped a glob of hot stuff onto her papers. I said, be careful. She said, oh, oops, dripping. Then there went another string of glue. She grabbed for a tissue, but she spilled a, club, a tub of glitter beads across the desk. She smiled with a big open mouth and bright, happy eyes. Ha, oh, look at that, Mason, a sparkle spill. She took a picture of it. That has been her screensaver for more than a year now. There was a new social work office sign on the door when school started last September. I mean, like the plain kind. The, the kind the school puts up. But Miss Blinney had finished her glitter project, too. She stuck her pink swoosh sign on the door. Tell you what, that makes the room easy to find. I like the way she is, Miss Blinney. How she spills things and doesn't wait for paint to dry. So today, I turn the corner into her room. Breathe out a breath. The kind that means you made it home. I like the swoof. I'm always welcome here. All right, if you want to continue to read The Truth is Told by Mason Buttle, we have many copies available in the library and some available on Overdrive as an ebook as well. Um, and I know this kind of starts out a little bit slow, but it does end up being um, a mystery as we discover that Mason's best friend um, has actually turned up dead in their family orchard and they're trying to figure out um, what happened to his friend. So if you'd like to read it, come and find it in the library. Thank you for joining me today, guys.